Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in Mark chapter 3. We're going to be starting verse 9 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, verse 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we start verse 9, the context here is that Jesus is by the Sea of Galilee, and there are many people there following him. There's people from north part of Israel, up, up, and there's people from the region of Galilee, there's people from, from up in Syrophoenicia, 50, 60 miles away from Tyre and Sidon. There's also people from Judea and Jerusalem, 75 miles away, and there's also people from even south of Judea, from Idumea, the old land of Edom, about 100 miles away. And there's people from the east side of the Jordan River. So there's, ah, there's a lot of people there. And so he says in verse 9, and he spoke to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him. Now, small ship here, the Greek word is pleurion. And it actually means a small boat, like a little rowboat. It's the kind of boat that you would use. Well, let's just say, let's just say uh, the fishermen are out in the in the water, and they're on the big fishing boat. And one of them, one or two of the fishermen, need to go to shore just for a little bit and come back, right? So they would get on a little boat and they would row to shore. And, uh, and they would pick up what they need, and then they'd row back to the big ship. Well, basically, Jesus is asking for one of those little rowboats. It wasn't a big ship. Um, and then it says that a small ship should wait on him. Now, this Greek word for wait on is proskerterio, proskerterio. And the first part, pros, means toward. And carterio means to be strong or to endure or persevere in something. So it means to be steadfast doing something. All right, to be steadfast doing something. So proskaterio, this Greek word, is also seen in Acts chapter 1 and verse 14. Romans 12, verse 12, and Colossians 4, verse 2. And it mean, it, in, in, those, in those verses, it means continuing in prayer with others. To continue in prayer, to persevere in prayer with others. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and verse 46, it, where the new believers continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in the temple. Also, in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, where the 12 apostles said that they would give themselves, what? Continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. This is, again, proskaterio. To, con to give themselves continually, to, to do something steadfastly. Now, in our text, in Mark chapter 3 and verse 9, and also in Acts chapter 10 and verse 7, this Greek word, proskaterio, is translated to wait on something. To wait on something. Now, the idea of our, the idea of our text is, is that Jesus wanted a small boat to be ready, readily available to him in case he needed to row out into the water a little bit to get away from the crowd that was pressing upon him. So, Jesus is by the water. There is a multitude of people there. And Jesus tells his disciples, again, the disciples here are who? They're not the 12 because the 12 haven't been chosen yet. They're, they're going to be chosen in a few more verses. <laughs> but um, 
he tells his disciples, the one that were his close followers, to get a little boat and have it ready. And have it ready, probably, you know, one of them, one or two of the disciples had a boat on a rope and they're, they're uh, you know, pulling it along the shore as Jesus is, either Jesus is standing and they're out in the water with the boat or Jesus is walking along the shore and someone is, one of the, one or two of the disciples is out, you know, a few feet out into the water pulling this rowboat along, <laughs> alongside of Jesus in case he needs to get in it and go out a little ways so he can, you know, get away from the crowd that was pressing on him. Now, you may say to yourself, Pastor Mark, why did you spend so much time on this word proskaterio, to wait on something? And the reason is because this Greek word proskaterio describes, this. it describes what we should be towards Jesus as this boat waited on Jesus, so also we should be those who wait on the Lord. Yes, we are God's children. And yes, we are called, we are called friends by Jesus. Jesus called us his friends, right? In John. But in Paul's letters, Paul called himself what? He called himself God's bond slave. Paul saw himself as God's servant. God's servant. Are we God's friends? Yes. But are we his servants? Yes, also. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, it says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. What? They shall walk and not faint. And it says, they that wait upon the Lord does, does mean to be patient and to wait for God to, to reveal his will to us. But the principle is also true that if we, if we wait on God, as a waitress or as a waiter does, and we are available to his will, then the promises of the rest of verse 31 are, are also applied to us, right? It's kind of like an important person, a king or a president sits down at, at a dinner, right? And there's, there's a servant standing right there, just ready, just ready. He's waiting on, on the king or on the president to, to give him orders to do. That's, this is what it's talking about. As the boat was readily available for Jesus to hop into and when he needed it, so also we are to be, we are to be readily available to our master. Yes, we wait upon the Lord to get guidance from him. But that's not the only reason we are to wait on the Lord to be readily available. Yes, Lord. Lord, what is it that you want me to do today? Do you need something today that, that, that I could help you with? That I could, I mean, not that, <laughs> not that we as sinful people could help the Lord do anything, right? I, we know that. But what we're saying is, is that we are to be available. Father, what is that, 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 how can, what can I do for you today? Not that we can do anything for him, but, but simply that, that we are readily, readily available at his service, right? To be, to be used by him. How, God, how can you use me today? Yes, we are to persevere and be strong in prayer and strong in fellowship and in church attendance and in studying the word of God. But also, but above all, we are to be steadfast and strong in our hearts, in our heart on waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, being available to him for God to use us. Lord, I'm here, can you use me today? Father, I'm here, I'm available. It's not like, you know, God, give me guidance what I can do today. No, it's just, God, I'm here. I'm here. Can you, it's almost like saying, God, I'm here. I ain't got nothing to do. Can, can you use me today? <laughs> but it's true. God, 
I'm available today to be used by you. I'm your servant. Being ready and available to be used by God. Let's be people who see the highest reward in life is to be available to the Lord, isn't it? Isn't Let's be people who say, you know what? I, I believe the highest reward in life comes from just simply being available to God, just being ready to be used by God today and, and, and every day that he gives to us. So it says here, I, when I was reading this, when I was reading this portion and as I was studying it, I thought to myself, it says here, verse 9, he says, and he spoke to his disciples that a little small boat, a little small boat would wait on him. And I thought to myself, you know, this is what we should do. We should be like that small boat that's just, just available. Lord, if you can use me today, I'm here. I'm here. If you can, if you can, if you want to use me, I, I'm available. Just like this boat, I thought, you know what? This is what we all should be as Christians. We should be available uh, to be used by God today. And then he says here, because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. Lest they should throng him. You know, there was a multitude of people there with Jesus along this shore. <clears throat> and in case the people started pressing and pushing upon him that he had the disciples either pulling or rowing a small boat along the shore as Jesus walked. So here, here's this boat. The, the disciples are taking care of this little boat. And there, as Jesus, when Jesus walks, they bring the boat. When Jesus stays, uh, the boat stays. But it's right there and it's available in case the people decide to get a little rowdy, <laughs> a little overexcited and start pushing upon Jesus, right? Verse 10 says, For he had healed many, insomuch that, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. Now, verse 10 gives the reason why Jesus wanted this boat available. Right? And verse 10 says, uh, For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him. They pressed upon him. Now, this Greek word for pressed upon is epipipto. Epipipto. And epi means upon, and pipto means to fall. So there were many people who in their excitement, were pushing up against Jesus to touch him that they may be healed of their disease or of their plague. So there was a multitude of people there. Not, on, not everyone was a follower of Jesus. Many of them were coming because they had sicknesses or diseases, some kind of plague, and they were pressing. So here's, <laughs> you can picture in your mind, Jesus is with his back, it is back to the water and the multitude of people here. And they were coming closer because they, they wanted Jesus, this miracle worker, this healer, to touch them or for them to touch him. They didn't care how. They just wanted to get, they just wanted to get relief from this sickness or this plague. And it says here, of their plagues. Now, this plague here, this Greek word is mastiv. And it means, mastiff means a, a whip or a scourge. It basically, basically refers to any kind of sickness or infirmity that causes suffering. So this plague here is a plague, something that is causing them to suffer tremendously. Now, these people... These people, picture in your mind, these people were so desperate to be healed that they were willing to be rude and to bump up, bump up against Jesus or to bump into Jesus. They were so desperate. I mean, if you had, if, if, if you had a sickness or a disease and you knew that there was, you know, 
and there was nobody that could cure you and you knew that there was someone nearby that could that has healed people and healed sicknesses you you'd be excited too and so here's these people they're they're sick and they're trying to push up against Jesus to either have him touch them or for them to touch him to bump it they, even if they just rub a shoulder against him just something to touch him so that that they would be healed that they would be rid of this plague of this infirmity so we're, we're going to continue on in verse 11 uh, next lesson verse 11 we're going to be dealing with unclean spirits then all right until then walk with the Lord I know he walks with you